Ukrainian forces appear to have conducted a limited raid across the Dnipro River and landed on the occupied east, left, bank of Kherson Oblast, although it remains unclear whether Ukrainian troops have established an enduring presence on the east bank. Several Russian millbloggers reported on August 8 that Ukrainian forces landed up to seven boats, each carrying around six to seven people, on the east bank of the Dnipro near the settlement of Kozachi Lahiri, broke through Russian defensive lines, and advanced up to 800 meters deep. A Russian millblogger noted that the Russian command recently redeployed a prepared grouping of Russian airborne personnel from the Kozachi Lahiri area to Zaporizhia Oblast and replaced them with mobilized fighters from an unspecified unit, thereby weakening Russian defensive power in this area. Kherson Oblast occupation head Vladimir Saldo downplayed reports of the Ukrainian landing and claimed that Russian artillery fire repelled the Ukrainian boats and that there are no Ukrainian troops near Kozachi Lahiri. However, the majority of prominent Russian millbloggers claim that Ukrainian forces managed to utilize tactical surprise and land on the east bank before engaging Russian forces in small arms exchanges, and Saldo was likely purposefully trying to refute claims of Ukrainian presence in this area to avoid creating panic in the already delicate Russian information space. Hotspots on available NASA fire information for resource management system data from the past 24 hours in this area appear to confirm that there was significant combat, likely preceded or accompanied by artillery fire. By the end of the day on August 8, many Russian sources had updated their claims to report that Russian forces retained control over Kozachi Lahiri, having pushed Ukrainian forces back to the shoreline and that small arms skirmishes are occurring in shoreline areas near Kozachi Lahiri and other East Bank settlements. Yet no visual evidence has been observed to suggest that there are a substantial number of Ukrainian personnel or the deployment of Ukrainian vehicles near Kozachi Lahiri, and the current pattern of Russian reporting is more consistent with a limited cross-river raid than a wider Ukrainian operation. Ukrainian officials have not commented on operations in this area as of now. Russia continues its efforts to increase its military presence in Belarus and further integrate Belarus into Russian favorable frameworks and Wagner Group activity in Belarus. Yet, a Russian insider source claimed that Wagner forces are withdrawing from Belarus and are either deploying to Libya or going on vacation to Russia. The source claimed that the first stage of Wagner's withdrawal from Belarus is complete and that the second wave will begin in mid-August. The source claimed that Wagner personnel are not planning on returning to Belarus. Weeks into Ukraine's highly anticipated counteroffensive, Western officials describe increasingly sobering assessments about Ukrainian forces' ability to retake significant territory. For Ukrainians forces to really make progress that would change the balance of this conflict. Some call it the most difficult time of the war. The primary challenge for Ukrainian forces is the continued difficulty of breaking through Russia's multi-layered defensive lines in the eastern and southern parts of the country, which are marked by tens of thousands of mines and vast networks of trenches. Ukrainian forces have incurred staggering losses there, leading Ukrainian commanders to hold back some units to regroup and reduce casualties. Senior U.S. officials say the U.S. recognizes the difficulties Ukrainian forces are facing, though retain hope for renewed progress. Ukraine's counteroffensive is going harder and slower than anyone would like, including the Ukrainians, but there is still a belief that there's time and space for Ukraine to be able make progress. Multiple officials said the approach of fall, when weather and fighting conditions are expected to worsen, gives Ukrainian forces a limited window to push forward. Ukraine's armed forces chief, General Valery Zaluznyi, told U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley that Ukrainian forces are step-by-step -step creating conditions for advancing. Zaluznyi added that he had told Milley that Ukraine's defenses were steadfast. Talking about the situation in the south, where Ukrainian forces have struggled to gain ground, Zaluznyi said, heavy fighting continues, Ukrainian troops step-by-step -step continue to create conditions for advancing. The initiative is on our side. Some officials fear the widening gap between overestimated expectations and slower results will spark a blame game among Ukrainian officials and their Western supporters, which may create divisions within the alliance which has remained largely intact nearly two years into the war.